Hello and welcome to Good Nightmare. I'm Sarah, your fabulous host, or rather just a regular host. And today I want to bring you something a little bit different, mostly just in the sense that the main topic or the main person featuring in this story for once isn't a woman. This particular episode actually stems from one of my favourite novels. And I'm sure if you didn't read the title by some miracle, then you'd be guessing it correctly anyway right now. I don't know. Sometimes I like to go into episodes not knowing anything about them. I just line up my playlist and go. Before we start, as always, I would love to ask you guys to stay tuned until the end of the episode to hear a promo from another fantastic podcast. Now, I'm sure we're all familiar with the novel or the film The Exorcist, but if you're like me, you probably weren't entirely aware of the case it was based on. I had always assumed that the story came from somewhere, but I never really looked it up until recently, and so I wanted to share it with you. The victim of these ongoing exorcisms was an anonymous 14-year-old boy who was named Roland Doe, or Robbie Mannheim. These took place in the 1940s, and for the sake of this episode, we'll refer to him as Roland from here on out. Roland was allegedly possessed by demons. The events of the exorcisms were recorded by the priest in attendance, Raymond Bishop, and it is some of these events which inspired the 1971 novel and its later film adaption. As I'm sure you've guessed, it's The Exorcist by William Peter Blatty. I'm yet to see the film. I know, shocking, but I highly recommend the novel. Roland was born into a German Lutheran family and had only adults for friends. Sounds like me as a child. It was his Aunt Harriet who would play with him the most, and it was she who introduced Roland to the Ouija board. Probably not the best idea. It was after Aunt Harriet's death that the family started to experience telltale signs of a haunting. According to Thomas B. Allen, they would experience furniture moving on its own, objects flying or levitating whenever the young boy Roland was nearby. The family turned to their pastor for help, Luther Miles Schultz, and he arranged for Roland to spend a night at his own house so he could be witness to any strange occurrences. He claimed to have witnessed the same things the family had reported, though he didn't record anything. When J.B. Rhine, a parapsychologist, heard of these claims, he thought that perhaps Schultz had, quote, unconsciously exaggerated some of the facts. Relying on their pastor for help, the family agreed when they were advised by Schultz to see a Catholic priest. Roland underwent several exorcisms to free him from his alleged demonic possession. During one exorcism, it's reported that Roland slipped his hands out of his restraints, pulled a bedspring from the mattress, and used it as a weapon, managing to cut the priest's arm. Naturally, at this point, the exorcism was stopped. The young boy's witnesses claim to have seen a shaking bed flying objects, Roland speaking in a deep guttural voice and seeing him have quite an aversion to anything considered sacred. During a second exorcism, witnesses claimed that the words evil and hell along with other markings appeared on Roland's body. Roland managed to break someone's nose during the exorcism. So you can imagine it was quite violent. After this event, it was claimed that the boy went on to lead, quote, a rather ordinary life. I'm not sure how you managed to live any kind of life after suffering such abuse at a young age. There is speculation, of course, over whether these events took place as they were said to, and some question whether the exorcisms ever took place at all. The claims of the possession and the related exorcisms can be tracked back to 1949 when newspapers printed anonymous articles of a possession and exorcism. One article claimed that there were 48 witnesses to one of the events. An author, Thomas B. Allen, mentioned earlier, who has researched the case, says that there's no definitive proof that the boy was ever possessed. 
He suggests that the boy may have suffered from a mental illness, physical or sexual abuse, or that perhaps the entire story may have been fabricated. Of course, mental illness or trauma is the belief held by most psychologists today. From a religious perspective, not to be dismissed, academics Terry D. Cooper and Cindy K. Epperson state that exorcisms are few and far between, but are indeed very real, and that genuine possession cannot be explained by psychiatry. Personally, I don't believe in possessions or demons. What scares me the most about these situations is what the allegedly possessed people can be put through in order to have their demons exercised. Death is not uncommon. The novel The Exorcist, as I mentioned earlier, is based off this case. It follows the possession of 12-year-old Regan McNeil and her subsequent exorcisms. Regan is first suspected to be suffering from her trauma related to her parents' divorce, but as her behaviour becomes stranger and more destructive, a priest is called to rid her of her apparent demons. If you're open to a good scare and read The Exorcist with a suspension of disbelief, I think you'll find it both creepy and enjoyable. I'm going to have to put watching the film down on my to-do list. I think it would make a perfect date night movie, so long as no one's eating pea soup for dinner. There's also some crimes and legends based around the filming of the movie, which I might dive into for a bonus episode at a later date. Let me know if that would be something that you're interested in. I would love for you guys to let me know what exorcism stories spark your interest especially. Feel free to get in contact with me via Twitter or Instagram at goodnightmare underscore s. I am always responding to DMs and I'm so happy to chat. Or email me at goodnightmare underscore s at outlook.com. As always, you're more than welcome to send in cases or stories or even a little write-up that you might like read out on the podcast, perhaps as a bonus episode. Otherwise, I'm always happy to chat about books, films or anything that might interest you. Thank you guys, as always, for listening and coming on this podcasting journey with me. I know I sound like a broken record, but I can't thank you all enough for your encouragement and support. If you have time to rate or review on iTunes, that would warm my little heart, and it really helps me get the word out about this podcast. Again, stay tuned, as there will be a promo at the end of this podcast episode. Thank you again for listening, and I'll talk to you next time. Sweet dreams. Hey everyone, Blaze and Will here from Hey Down and From Podcast. Join us every Tuesday as we provide the movie commentary that you never asked for. Who's throwing a party? That's going to be terrible. We go over our weekly entertainment-based adventures. God, if you're listening, <laughs> hell! Then we dig in and tear apart the movies everyone loves. Oh, I had my mouth open, you f***ing animal! Check us out on iTunes, Podbean, and Stitcher. I had to rewind myself. I know! <laughs> Alright, thanks, thanks, thanks for mansplaining that to me, please. And give us a follow on Instagram at heydownfront underscore podcast and Twitter at hdif underscore podcast. See you next Tuesday. Oh, okay, Blake. <laughs>